new year, God, and you've given us an opportunity and you've laid out a path before us, whether we're going to worship you or we're not, or we're going to choose you or not, Lord. And I want to thank you, God. But I feel like everybody in here is on the same mindset, Lord. And you said that you would command a blessing when your people were unified and when they were set. And God, the last time, some of the times that I read in the Bible where you touched people like that was when they were in the upper room in one mind and one accord. And they had no idea what was coming. Wouldn't it be awesome tonight if we had no idea what was fixing to happen in here, but we were just after you and we knew that we loved you and we wanted to worship you. Father, I'm asking you to touch her. Touch our worship tonight, God. Let the Holy Spirit fall in this place on us, Lord. And some of us need it. Some of us really need it because we can get up and talk a good talk, but sometimes we struggle, Lord. And I know all of us are in, in that boat in some form or fashion, God, but I'm asking you to help us tonight to worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen.
I love this. He commanded the people of Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and obey His law and His commandments. Now, I'll give you a little bit of context here to what's fixing to go down. You know, it said there was peace in the land for 10 years, and I get to thinking about Hunter and her testimony. And I think about how, regardless of what her family past has been, she says, We're, we will do what's right. I'm, it doesn't matter what happened here. And you may have family members that are godly, and you may have some that are ungodly. That you can't help. But what you can help is what you choose to do with God. Is He going to be yours? Or is he going to, are you just going to follow on into the first steps? 2 Chronicles 14, skipping down to chapter 8, verse 8. King Asa had an army of 300,000 warriors from the tribe of Judah, armed with large shields and spears. He also had an army of 280,000 warriors from the tribe of Benjamin, armed with small shields and bows. Both armies were comprised of well-trained fighting men. Both of them. Once an Ethiopian named Zerah, I guess that's his name, attacked Judah with an army of one million men with 300 chariots. I don't know about you, but 580,000 against one million is not winning odds. I would never go into a fight like that. The U.S. military would never go into a fight like that had they not had the superior advantage. And it's clear here. They didn't have any chariots, so they didn't have the advantage. But one advantage he had that I want to talk about is during the 10 years he decided, I'm going to fortify my walls. I'm going to make my walls fortified and I'm going to serve the Lord God Almighty. And that's who's going to reign here in Judah and throughout all the kingdom. So my question is, what are you fortifying your walls with in 2024? Are you going to fortify it with worship? Because that's really the only thing that's going to ever get you where you need to be in God's kingdom. Or you can fortify it with complaining about all your problems and complaining about everything that's wrong and seeing the world for what it is in your eyes and never seeing it from God's perspective because you don't get to His perspective because you don't worship. You can't see things the way you ought to see them if you don't worship. That's the only thing I know to tell you tonight. Worship changes the way I look at my situation. There's going to be an army that comes against you in 2024. I promise. It may be an army of trying to recover from a surgery. It may be an army uh, coming against your finances. It may be an army of what decision do I make? But as long as God is your God and you say he's mine, that's mine. And when you talk about him, you tear up because he's actually your Jesus. And then you fortify. How am I for I'm fortifying with worship. This is how I'm going to fight my battle. Yeah, you carry a gun around, but I'm going to tell you something. I've heard stories of young ladies that gets in the car of a rapist and starts speaking in tongues, and the guy pulls over and says, Get out. I can't handle this. They got no gun. They need no gun. Let me read you the rest of the story. They advanced to the town of Mesha. So Asa deployed his armies for the battle of the valley north of Masrah. Then Asa cried out to the Lord his God. Love it. There it is again. His God. Oh Lord, no one but you can help the powerless against the mighty. He sees it meant. He sees what's in front of him. How about we just get down and basic with God tonight and say, I can't win nothing I'm going to set my hands to unless you go before me tonight, Lord. This year, this is yours. You're in control. You're over the old country song, Jesus, take the wheel. I don't even want to be in the passenger seat. Put me in the trunk. I want you driving, God. I don't want to be no part of it. He says, help us, O Lord, our God, for we trust in you alone. It is in your name that we have come against this vast horde. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere men prevail against you. So, everybody say so. So the Lord defeated it didn't say Asa in his military. It said the Lord defeated the Ethiopians in the presence of Asa 
Then the army of Judah and the enemy fled. What are you going to fortify your wall with? It isn't going to be yours. Father, I'm asking you, Lord, let us worship. God, whatever's going on in our lives, let us get the fortitude that Asa had and say, you know what? I'm building up. I'm fortifying my walls, but it's going to be with worship because I can't do this without you. I'm useless and powerless without you at my side, leading me, fighting my fight for me, fighting the battle for me. God, I need your help more than I ever have before. Father, I don't know about everybody in this crowd, but I promise you as far as me and my house goes, we're fortifying this place with worship. And I'm going to start speaking things that I don't see. I don't see a whole lot of people here tonight, but that don't mean they're not coming. I'm going to speak to those that are coming. That we're going to have so many people in here that we have to figure out what we're going to do next. I thank you that it's going to happen, Lord, because people are hungry for you. People are hungry for a real experience, for a real God that can make a real difference in their life. Not some demigod that's out here, something that they're worshiping out in this world. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.
driveway was a gravel driveway and it went up the hill and around to their house and me and my brother we used to ride our bikes up their gravel driveway and then we'd fly back down the hill my dad worked in our garage we had a like a detached garage next to our house and that's where he worked he owned his own business and he worked in that and I remember one day uh, me and Aaron, we were riding our bikes down the hill, and I had a crash in the gravel. And I remember having like a literal piece of gravel stuck in my elbow. And I just remember thinking, <laughs> if my dad could just hear me, he would run. He would know that I need him. Because that's the kind of dad that I had when I was grown up. I knew that if he could just get to me, that I'd be okay. It didn't matter if my arm was broken. It didn't matter if there was a piece of gravel stuck in it. For the rest of my life, I knew that if my dad would just, if he'd just get to me, that I was going to be okay. about you all, but I feel sometimes like my life is that bicycle flying down the hill in the gravel. And maybe you're not going through anything right now, but I know that there are some of us in this room that we are. And this is not a moment in my life when I need to call my earthly father. This is not a moment in my life that I think back and I think, oh, if he could just know what I'm going through, then he can fix it because he can't fix it. But I have a heavenly father that I've spent a lot more time with than I have my earthly father. That he knows me inside and out. He knows my whole entire past, but he knows my whole entire future also. And though I feel like my life and, and circumstances and things around me are flying down the hill in the gravel, about to crash, I know that if I just cry out, if I can just lift my hand and say, Lord, I just need you. Lord, I need you to pick me up off of the ground. I need you to know that I'm in a bad way. He can't fix it and he will. I want to say, if you're in here tonight and you're going through something like that, can you raise your hand so I can see you? Because sometimes I feel like I'm in the boat by myself. <laughs> sometimes I, I feel like we're in this fight all alone. And I don't want you to feel like you're in this fight all alone. We have the same Heavenly Father, and He knows exactly what we need, all of us. He knows where you're at, and He knows how to meet you there, and He knows how to fix it. This next song is a song that was written probably some of you weren't even alive yet. But it just, it simply says, I just want to come back to the heart of worship and why we do it. 
Why, why do we worship him? Why would you not? After all that he's done, after all that he's been for me, I can't not worship him. For the rest of my life, I will, I will worship. I will declare that he's good, even though I feel sometimes like I'm about to hit the gravel. I know who he is, and I know that he's able, and I know that he loves us. So we're going to worship him. Lord, coming back to the heart of worship for you, Lord, we just want to be in your presence. We just want to be where you're at. That's all. Nothing fancy, God, nothing special, Lord, in us, but it's in you. We honor you. We glorify you. to 
Did it is 
opportunity that we have and that is that we can not only come and be at church together but we can pray together we can grow together in, in the Lord and we can be who he's called us to be together so I want to we can you can go play in and we can come down here Oh, 
don't even notice. I was literally talking to her every day. Yeah. I was like,